This video is brought to you by Squarespace. On August 2nd, 2023, a mother and her son, we'll call them Sonia and Chad, were driving northbound on I-15 in southern Utah at a high rate of speed as they were running late to a Nika mountain bike event being held that afternoon. At about 3 p.m., a large truck swerved by their vehicle, clipping the front tire of Chad's 2021 Specialized Rock Copper 27.5, dislodging it from its bike rack and causing it to skid and bounce across the freeway at a speed of at least 70 miles per hour. At some risk to her personal safety, Sonia was able to secure the bike before the situation could get more serious, but the damage was already done to the bike. As the team mechanic, I helped a distraught kid and mother find a loaner bike for Chad Chad's race and then set to work evaluating what it would take to get the bike back up to working order. But you guys know me and you know that I'm not just going to be satisfied getting this bike just to the running point. Yes, we could replace the grips, the front tire, the rim, the derailleur, the chain, the seat, and anything else that's not quite working right. But I can't help but see all these deep scratches, the nine speed subpar drivetrain, the spring fork, the heavy square taper bottom bracket and cranks, and just find myself itching to make this bike better. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna get this Red Bull obsessed racing kit, a bike that not only works again, but that's going to work better for him, and also something he can be totally stoked to show his friends. So join me, my friends, as we build a better Red Bull bike. This video is not sponsored by Red Bull Energy Drink or its sister companies. But as we dive into the teardown of this bike, I want to talk to you about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. While not all of us will experience a mountain bike emergency before a race, many of us will have a marketing emergency at some point. And just for kicks, I decided to see what it would take to create a website all on my phone using Squarespace to see how long it would take to get a basic brochure site up as soon as possible. Using my phone, it only took five minutes to do this. Of course, if you want to bring things to the next level, the desktop website creation experience is a bit more robust, but even that only took me a little less than 15 minutes to create a great looking website that would get the job done in a hurry. And since I was on a roll, I figured why not see how long it takes to launch some products on this newly created mobile site. I found that I could quickly create a custom product, in this case, a digital purchase of a custom bike build service. And I was also able to get a t-shirt with my logo up on the shop as well in the form of some merch. And all of this was done in less than five minutes. So for your own marketing emergencies, head over to squarespace.com slash build a better bike to try Squarespace for free and use the coupon code build a better bike for 10% off when you're ready to buy.
When you're doing layer masking whilst powder coating, you'll only put the piece in the oven for long enough to flash it, or get it hot enough that the powder will melt and congeal. But no longer than that. You don't want to actually have very much cure time, 
before removing decals. So after flashing, it's important to pull the piece back out of the oven to remove those decals before putting it back in for the actual cure time. But when pulling off the decals, there's a very small window of when the piece is not too hot and not too cold, where it's best to pull those decals off. You can see I messed things up here. I screwed it up. You did? Compared to how scratched up his bike was before, anything is better. Allies. Oh. It's actually going pretty well now. Maybe we, maybe I started too soon. It's harder when it gets cooler, yeah. That looks really good though. And the reason was, is because I got a little impatient and didn't allow it to cool quite long enough. In general, it's better to let it be too cool because during this phase, you can actually use a heat gun, a blow dryer, or just put it back in the oven for a few seconds to get it hot enough to continue to yank those decals off. I just didn't wait long enough. Fortunately, I was able to salvage this paint job with just a little bit of powder touch-up. Whenever I'm upgrading a bike with a straight head tube like this bike has, and I want to get a more modern tapered 
Air fork on it. I like to use these FSA headsets that adapt a tapered fork to a straight tube. This will lift the front of the bike slightly, changing the geometry, but to get a nice air fork, I think it's well worth it. And many kids prefer the slight slackening that occurs anyway. You'll find a link to these awesome headsets in the video description. As you've no doubt noticed in this build so far, I try to reuse good components from my bike bin. Usually components pulled off maybe higher end bikes where the customers have upgraded and I've asked to keep the parts that they aren't going to use so I can pay it forward on bikes of kids who can't afford the top of the line stuff. And also so I don't have to dip into my own funds to always make these upgrades and these builds. That helm fork is a great example. I think I've used that fork in three different builds now for kids who were able to get some use out of it until they were able to finally get upgraded bikes and then return that to me and pass it on to the next kid who can benefit from it. And in this case, I found an older 11 speed box two derailleur and shifter in my bike bin that I was hoping would work for this bike. But as you'll see later, I didn't realize the cage wasn't quite long enough for that cassette. But in these videos, I like to show you what went right as well as what went wrong in these builds.
Dave described it as looking like a house from a typical horror film. After they went inside, Dave looked in the living here. Ed said, Upstairs. I wish he wouldn't. Thanks for coming along with me for another very fun build. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm grateful for all your support, which allows me to help kids ride more. Stay tuned to the end to see this boy's reaction and remember that if you want to support this channel, as well as get ad and interruption free viewing of these videos, as well as early releases, subscribe to my Patreon. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again real soon. Yeah, that's sick.